My brothers and sisters, it's once again that I bring you greetings from Lomax Temple. Uh, while we are still in seclusion and separation, it does not mean that God is still not able to reach out and touch us and bring us together again. I am excited about what God is doing in the life of the church. Even now, he is transforming us into something we've never been before. We're going places we've never gone, doing things we've never done. I'm, I'm just excited what God is doing. And in the lives of his people, he's allowing us even now to be a blessing to others. I, I greet you this morning with Jesus' joy. I am uh, enthusiastic about this morning's message. I, I'm not going to keep you very long, but I think it's a good message considering the season that we are in. So if you have your Bibles, if you would go with me to Luke chapter 11, uh, verses 24 through 26. Luke chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. And when you get there, I can feel you over the airways. Just say, shout amen. Amen. So when you get there, what you'll find are these words. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest. Finding none, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. When he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. The last state of that man is worse than the first. God's word to God's people. Thanks be unto God. Let's go to God for prayer. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Father, I ask that you grant that anointing that makes preaching easy. God, use me in spite of me that your name be glorified and your people be edified in the name of Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. I want to ask you if you would prayerfully ponder the thought for this message, living in a haunted house. Living in a haunted house. Th this time of year, more so than any other time of year, uh, during this Halloween, uh, and I want to say season, I say season, but we are inundated with images, with, with with scary images. We'll deal with more of that about on Wednesday, on Wednesday evening when we go into Bible study. But but we are we are we are consumed with, we are, we are bombarded with scary images this time of year, and none appear more so than the image of a haunted house. Images of a haunted house are the one of the foundations of this this time of year. It seems like they are everywhere. They are the focal point. They are on every shelf. They are in every store. They are in every digital image, every commercial, every movie, every show. It seems as if you can't cut on anything right now, turn on anything right now, walk by any place right now and not see some type of image of a haunted house. But what if, what if, what if I told you that there are people living in haunted houses every day? Real haunted houses, not, not the make-believe ones that we see on TV, that we consume in our stores. And they just don't live in haunted houses during Halloween, but they live in haunted houses year-round, week after week, month after month, year after year. And, and the worst part of that is that they're not aware 
that they're living in a haunted house. They, they don't know it. They are living day in and day out in a house filled with fear. They don't know. But this is what a haunted house is. It is a house filled with fear. And in this text, in this particular text, Jesus gives us a parable of what it looks like living in a haunted house. I don't know if you see it, but I want to help you I'm fill in the corners, fill in the pages. Uh, before we go any further, we need to do a few prerequisites. If you don't mind, we, let's, let's do a first few things. We've got to deal with the parable before we go into what he's really talking about. We, we first need to know that uh, this house that Jesus is talking about is our bodies. This, 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 is, a, this is our house, our temple. We, uh, and, this, and this temple houses, particularly for Christians, it houses the Holy Spirit. We are built as temples, as houses to house the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 tells us that did you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? We are built to house the Spirit of God. Our bodies were built to be filled with the Spirit. We are temples, we are churches, we are places of worship. And when we allow our temples, our, our bodies, our, 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 our churches to be filled with anything else other than the Holy Spirit, they become haunted houses. They become houses filled with fear, evil, decay, and perversion. So, so let's walk through this thing together. Let's walk through this text together. The first thing I want to tell you is that when you're dealing with a haunted house, that empty is just not enough. Empty is not enough. Let's, let's look at this. Verse 24, it says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places. Seeking rest and finding none, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. When a person decides to clean up their life, when they decide to make a decision to change, when they decide to get rid of the bad behavior, the corrupt conversation, and the destructive desires, they have decided to clean up their house. Now, they haven't decided to receive Christ. They just decided to make a change. They decided to clean up. They decided to get rid of the junk. They decided to get rid of the clutter. They decided to get rid of the bad behavior. I want to say this to all of those who prescribe and subscribe to getting rid of evil but not receiving Christ, that empty is not enough. Because empty does not keep Empty does not keep out the devil. It's not enough to clean up our lives without receiving Christ and filling it with the Holy Spirit. You, you may be able to get rid of the bad things in your life right now, but you cannot keep it out. Evil will eventually come back. It will return. The text says, that the spirit left the man but came back. He put the spirit out. He cleaned up his house. He emptied out all of things that were, that were pertaining to making a change. But he did not receive Christ. And the text says that the spirit left but came back. Evil will not leave you alone. It will keep trying to come back um, into your life, into your house, into your job, into your relationships. Evil will keep coming back. It's not 
done with you. When your house, your spiritual man, woman is empty, you are in danger of attack if you're not filled with Christ. When Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he kept trying to come back. When you read the text, Luke's retelling of Jesus in the wilderness says that the devil tempted, Satan tempted Jesus, but he returned at an opportune time. That, that, that the New King James Version says he left him for a season. Which means that he left, but he returned again to tempt Christ again. The Bible doesn't say when. It just says that he tried again. So what makes us think that if Satan didn't try Christ, what makes us think that he's not going to try us? He is not going to leave us alone for good. He will keep trying to get into your life, get into your home. He will keep trying to come back. That's why I suggest to you that empty is not enough. If you try to clean up your house and not fill up your house, your house will still come under attack. As a Christian, your life should never be empty. It should always be filled. Filled with the fruits of the Spirit. Filled with prayer. Filled with study. Filled with fasting. Filled with giving. Filled with sharing. Filled with loving your neighbor. A person's life that is empty is not filled with the Holy Spirit. And it leads to living in a haunted house. Because if you don't fill your house and you leave it empty, empty is not enough. Not only is empty not enough, empty invites ruin. Empty invites ruin. Look at verse 26. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there and the last state of the man is worse than the first. In this verse, the evil spirit not only comes back, but he invites seven other spirits worse than himself to live in this man as well. And the text says that his condition is far worse now than before. See, at first he only had one evil spirit. And when his house was empty, there was nothing preventing the evil spirit from coming back. If the truth of the matter be told, he created an environment not only where the spirit could live, but it was also an invitation for other spirits to come as well. So now he just doesn't have one to deal with. He has eight to deal with. And his house is filled with the evil that comes when your house is empty. If you don't fill your house, something will. If you don't fill your house with Jesus, something else will come in. If you don't fill your house with the Holy Spirit, something else will come in. And now, instead of this man living his best life, he is living his worst life. Empty invites ruin. Empty invites ruin. His life is ruined. He ruined his whole life because this is a descriptive characteristic of a haunted house. When you are living in a haunted house, nothing works. The house is in ruin. Everything is broken. Everything is busted. 
And the point I'm trying to make, and I hope it becomes clear to you right now, that when you're dealing with a haunted house and your house becomes in ruin, everything around you is broken. Everything around you is busted. If you feel like your house is in ruin and everything is broken, everything is busted, nothing is working, let me suggest to you, you might be living in a haunted house. Might be living you might be living in a place that has become haunted but, but let me share you I don't want to leave you uh, with some bad news I have some good news for you if, you if you think that you're living in a haunted house if you believe there might be spirits wandering around in your house if you believe you might be uh, uh, being attacked by, by evil spirits in your house I, I know somebody that can help you get rid of the evil in your house. I know someone that can that can help you get rid of the goose ghosts and the ghouls that are in your house. I know a real ghost buster that will come in and get rid of all of the evil in your life and his name is Jesus and, and if you don't believe me his credentials are found in Revelation 3 and 20 when he told the Christians at the church of Laodicea, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens up the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. And he gave us an assurance for the same holds true today. If you live in a house that you feel is haunted, let me tell you, Jesus is knocking at your door. And if you let him in to your life, he will not just clean it up, but he'll fill it up. He'll clean out all the ghosts and the ghouls and the evil and the depression and the doubt. He'll clean up all your mess, all of the bad things that happen. But then he'll fill it up. He'll fill it up with the Holy Spirit. Let Jesus come in. He's knocking. Let him come in. And clean up your house. He'll fill your house with joy. He'll fill your house with peace. He'll fill your house with love. He'll fill your house with patience. He'll fill your house with the Holy Spirit. He just won't come in and clean up. But he'll come in and fill it up. I want the Holy Spirit to come in and clean it up and fill it up. I'm tired of being under attack. And if you're like me, you just need to let Jesus come on in. Call him out. He'll come in and clean up your house and fill it up with the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to worry anymore. When you come home, your house will be filled with joy. Your house will be filled with love. Your house will be filled with peace. If you're tired of living in fear, why don't you let him come on in? If you're tired of being afraid, if you're tired of being scared, won't you let Jesus come on in? He's knocking at the door. He wants to come in and live with you and clean up your house. And if you let him, he will. If you're tired of living in a haunted house, a place filled with the evil spirits that come from living in an empty house, and you know now that empty is not enough, you got to fill it because empty causes ruin. If you let Jesus come into your life and clean up and fill up your house, your life, your house will be a place where you will be at rest. I pray today that if you find yourself in this condition and you now see that there are things in your life that shouldn't be there, invite Jesus into your life. 
invite him. He's knocking at the door. And if you let him in, he'll not only clean it up, but he'll fill it up. And if he's filled up your house, you will have a house of peace and love and joy. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would move in this place, have your way in the hearts and minds of your people. I pray, God, right now that while people are seeking you, they will find you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. Jesus, I pray that you would just reach out to your people who are struggling with all of the things that are not of you that they are living with. I pray they will receive your invitation with joy and thanksgiving. They will let you in that you will clean up their houses and fill up their houses, their lives, that they might become all that you intended for them to be. I ask this prayer in the name of Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I pray now that if, if you are seeking God, I pray that you call on him now. You don't have to live like you live. You don't have to be under attack, depression, despair, doubt, disaster, discouragement. The enemy wants to come in and give you all of those things. But if you would let Jesus into your life, I declare pick you up. He will turn you around. He will clean your house up and fill it as well. Call him, will you? I know he'll answer. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forever, may all of God's people say amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, may God bless you, may God keep you, and have a great rest of